<laughs> what is up guys welcome back to the channel and you guys are joining me mid flash of what is more than likely the final revision for this car um for now um and i'll talk about that as we go on throughout the day i'm gonna be running some errands you guys probably saw a familiar thing if you've been watching the channel for a while and that was my clothes bag because i'm taking my work clothes to the dry cleaner for those who are unaware i work for the court system here in my local area in, in georgia and uh, that's part of the reason i don't do racing content there's many reasons why i don't but that's one of them um and uh, yeah, I'm taking my clothes to get dry clean because I can't be bothered to iron clothes. So yeah, um, as you can see, it is very upset. I have never seen so many lights on this dash at one time. Um, of course, they'll all go away once it's done doing the flash. Uh, the reason you're probably thinking, Jordan, you're an idiot. There's no battery charger to the car. I know the battery's healthy in this car. And it, as you guys have seen, you just sat with me through the entire flash um, process. So uh, yeah, I mean, super quick. It took no time at all. So that's why I was okay with not hooking up my battery charger. I do have one for this car. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the key off and keep it off for 15 seconds and we'll go and start the car and get started with the rest of our video. Okay, so all that's done. Um, Let's go ahead and hop in here. I know my floor mats are disgusting and I apologize. So, <coughs> goodness, once again, getting nothing but fumes out of this car. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be driving it around a little bit, kind of get a feel for the drivability of this final revision of sorts. Um, I'm actually gonna check my email right fast while I'm thinking about it and see what if Matt responded to me just yet. I've been having so many issues out of my CarPlay in this car since I got my iPhone 15 Pro. Uh, when I was using my Samsungs, I had no issues with it. But for some reason, I have to just full on reset my infotainment a lot now with this iPhone. And I have no clue why. If anyone knows how to fix that and get it to stop, like it either will not play the audio, will not show there's audio, or flat out won't connect to my phone at all. It's the weirdest thing. And it's only with volume that I have issues with. Like, the of the of the music itself like if i'm just tapping around my my half dick little noise is still there All right so we are now on our way to go run a couple quick errands um still need to get my dsg retuned which is on my list of things i need to take care of the car so far just first impressions does feel a little bit better in terms of just general drivability which is something i'm glad to see I, that, uh, that's one thing i've been really harping on is just wanting to get this car in a state where it drives in its best capacity um of course the fuel pump stuff is what i'm actually going to be talking about now i didn't mean to, to mention it so early but the reason i said that this tune is kind of the final revision for this car for now uh is my 034 high pressure fuel pump is it hitting the target for rail pressure at all uh rail pressure target is 3500 psi this car is only hitting about 3150 ish uh, according to matt uh, and he actually pulled a data zap from my last log that i didn't do and showed exactly to me what was going on so i'm probably gonna have to reach out to 034 and be like hey something's up with this high pressure pump it's not reaching the target pressures and see if they're willing to either warranty this one which i would not like to do um, because that means that i would this car would be undrivable during that meantime uh or would be willing to, to exchange it send out a new one and we send this one back and try again um which is what i'm more open to doing but so far i mean it's driving really well like it drives even better than it did before let's see if we get some windows down action And yeah, it's driving 10 times better. Like it's really, it has that feeling of finality to it, which is making me happy because I just wanted this car to be done. I wanted the tuning to be done. I wanted to focus on other things and just experience this car and enjoy what I paid all this money for between the turbo and the tuning and all that garbage. Um, I'm trying to remember, I don't swear on YouTube. <laughs> Only the guys can hear me swear. Uh, I, I'm trying to do better guys. I know for a while I was, on a streak of having to censor myself a lot. Let's see if we can get some turbo spool. Okay. 
Well, I'm gonna handle this and I'll be back with you guys in a moment. So one thing I'm noticing right away while I'm just driving it is uh, these fuel trims are wonky AF, dude. Like, I don't know how well you guys can see it, but my fuel trims are well into the high positives, which I have never seen on this car. So I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's just it needs to get acclimated. Like when I'm on gas, it drops to an appropriate level, but it is way too high. All right, all done picking up lunch. Let's go ahead and take her on home and uh, see how uh, it behaves the rest of the way home. The car is driving really well, like I was saying, but I am concerned about those fuel trims. I have never seen the fuel trims get that high on this car. Uh, so I'm like, what's up with that? Um, so it uh, doesn't seem to be throwing any lights or anything. Like, look at this, positive 20. I have never seen that ever since I put this access board in the car. So it's a little concerning, but I'm sure maybe it just needs to acclimate. I will talk to Matt about it and uh, see what he has to say. And uh, we'll go from there on that. About it, maybe it just needs time. I mean, I've driven it a mile and a half or two. So maybe uh, I will take the fun way home. Still seeing a little bit of spark knock time to time on partial throttle but that's nothing to be concerned about at all but making boost a lot easier but it's not bucking around as much as it used to so it's like it's driving a lot better and this is what i expected it to drive like when it was done in terms of just general drivability but the fuel trims are like i said something that i need to research um i am really not gonna be pushing this car this time i know i said that when i went and picked up casein and we had our little day out um with it being like still trying to figure out what the heck's going on i don't want to push this car around too much i want to give it a chance to figure out what's what it's doing and uh hopefully get those fuel trims in check um and sometimes i just had this happen when i first got the access port except it was doing it the opposite way it was doing it only in the negatives like it was um trying to pull fuel instead of add it so but yeah, on a Mon gas, you can see it's it's positive two, which is within spec. I, the closer to zero, the better. But zero is better than eleven when I'm not on the throttle. This is a fun road too. Like I really wish I hated this car a little bit more, so I'd be more willing to push it. Uh, I really like this car, so I take probably overdo taking care of this car. But it does feel a bazillion times better in terms of just general drivability, though, which is all I could ask for. So that's just a fun road to ride on. You don't have to get going crazy fast to enjoy it. It's a good road to practice the driving techniques though for Wookiees. Okay. Thanks for doing that, bud. I really appreciate it. You are a fantastic individual. Gosh, I want to say so many words. Ugh. I gotta keep the channel PG. I gotta keep the channel PG. Gotta keep the channel PG. I just gotta keep telling myself that so I don't cuss people out for driving like stupid morons, dude. Oh, that could have ended bad. I am so glad I was watching. Because you know, a few years ago, I would have swore so much. I would have been dropping, I think, I think the last time I like caught myself having a close call on video, I broke my F-bomb record in a sentence. I said it like eight or nine times back to back. I was so mad. Uh, so, gotta keep it PG though. YouTube has, got, has cracked down on that kind of stuff, so I gotta be PG. All right guys, so back home with the car after that initial drive and went and picking up lunch. And uh, yeah, like I said, the car feels a good bit better than it did before in terms of just general drivability. 
The fuel trims, like I said, are a little bit concerning, but no check engine light or anything for it. So I'm just going to assume it's acclimation and it'll get better as I drive it. Um, I've had instances in the past where my fuel trims get kind of wonky for a minute. And as I put miles on it, uh, it kind of just steadily drops until it gets back into the normal ranges and stuff. So that's probably exactly what that is. It's just the car acclimating to the fact that a couple of parameters probably got changed in there. Uh, I am still going to message Matt about it and make sure everything looks good and all that kind of stuff. I should have logged probably, but probably would have been a good option. Um, didn't cross my mind at the time, but uh, maybe, maybe like some point soon, I find another excuse to go drive this car. I'll, I'll log it all again and send it over to him to have him look at it. Uh, more than likely, the solution would be just to reflash a tune and unplug the rear O2, which is pretty much the only way to fully get rid of that kind of stuff. This stuff happens when you're running a um, catted or catalyst down pipe that just isn't cutting it in terms of making Making the O2 sensors happy. Really, the only way to get around this is, is to not have the check engine light on the dash for it. Is to get a Gessy Cat, which is way too much. So, not doing that. <laughs> but yeah, so I got a couple of small things for the car to add to it to give it kind of a small facelift. Um, I got a chrome delete for from Badge Skins to cover this GTI as well as the side blade here. Um, won't be covering this top strip, I believe. So, there'll be a tiny bit of chrome left. Uh, and then I got a Mark 8 style rear badge. Now, originally my plan was to buy the Mark 8 rear badge and the Mark 8 side blades, but the company that sells them that I found months ago doesn't ship to the US, even though they're located in Canada. And you'd think that that would just work because you know we share a border and it's not like it's coming from Europe or something like that, but for some reason they won't ship it here. So I bought one off of eBay, so that'll probably go on. I'm planning on installing both this weekend um and putting the mark 8 badge somewhere like right here under the vw uh and then obviously the chrome delete for the side badges look really good uh, eventually i do kind of want to work on deleting some of the chrome on the car um obviously the mark 8 badge in the back and the side blades top strip will still have some chrome on it uh, i want to do like a, a, a line of vinyl that covers this like chrome strip like strip up on the grill uh, and I think I can either do that with just vinyl that I have lying around. I do happen to have some like forged carbon vinyl, but we cut that thin. You won't notice it's even a carbon vinyl um, and stuff like that. You know, general, just blacking out some of the chrome, obviously keeping the silver wheels to give it kind of an accent. Don't want the car to be all black, but I think like a chrome strip, like chrome delete there, the badge in the back will still have a little bit of chrome on it, but that's okay. And then deleting the chrome on the front strip would be a nice little cosmetic facelift. I am thinking though, now this car has kind of reached the end of the performance side and cranking it up, uh, unless I really wanted to go get the map sensors and the high pressure pump done. Um, again, like if I switched to auto tech or if 34, you know, says, hey, something's not right with that, we'll send you a new one and you can replace it and you should be good to go. Um, I mean, the car's not me getting any more power. I mean, this, this is kind of where it's at for now. So that's what it is, what it is, honestly, it's, it is what it is. So, uh, we'll figure out if I'm, if, if I decide to do that kind of stuff, I mean, and just continue on with this process, or if I really just don't care enough. And like, like I said, in the last video, the power it makes now, I am more than content with. It's very fun, very fast. Um, and I can still put the power down relatively easily. So I may just leave it where it is and be happy with it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a very safe setup. It's not gonna be, you know, taxing this motor to a point of where I need to start putting money away in a rainy day fund for a for a short block on this car. But um, yeah, all in all, I would say like, the main focus from here on is going to be cosmetic stuff. Um, like I said before, I want to get like this thing fully paint corrected. I got some clear coat stuff going on with the headlights and the red strip on the grill now, I've noticed. Uh, I'd love to get all that fixed. Um, I want to get a new front splitter. I'm looking at the Aerofab front splitter, the Renwagen side skirts and side splitters. Um, and then I've got an idea for the back. Uh, so. Premium endorsed carbon sells an A-Spec wing for the back here, which I'm planning on getting. And then uh, Velt Sport, Eurotuning's own brand, which Eurotuning's my boys. I absolutely love that shop. Uh, so I, I love the fact that I can give them business for it. They're selling a new carbon diffuser. It's gonna be quad exit. 
So I think adding a small carbon wing and a small carbon diffuser back here is going to look freaking awesome. Uh, and I'll get to convert this car to quad exit. I probably do resonated tips. I know there's a lot of like contention over resonated tips doing anything. So I'm gonna put it to the test. We're gonna, we're gonna get some resonated tips and see if it changes the sound. Either that or we'll just get some big beefy tips like Dusty Golf R and have like massive four and a half inch tips out the back. Uh, but I have to find some way for them to pair up to the Borla uh, outlet size, which is a two inch outlet. So it's a super small outlet. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that. I hope you all enjoyed this video and getting to see the car in action a little bit. I mean, I didn't get to push it because I was really worried about those fuel trims, but um, the car shouldn't be making any more power. It should be about the same as you've seen the last couple of videos. Uh, it should just be more drivable. So it's not gonna be anything. It's not really worth trying to push it on the camera anyway right now, because I mean, it, like, you know, it's gonna be about the same horsepower. But anyway, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give a like, subscribe for more content coming soon on the Mark 7. And I will see you guys later on. Take care, everyone, and have a great day.